here we are in the cockpit of a Citation Ultra, and I'm going to be taking a few minutes to show you the cockpit pre-flight inspection and how to set up a cockpit before the first flight of the day. I have a flow that I like to use, and it's it's real simple. We just start on the co-pilot side, and uh, there's a few things to hook up and look at, and in general, we're going to be making sure that all of the switches that need to be set to a certain position are either off, auto, or normal. We'll start with the oxygen mask on the co-pilot side. This is normally unplugged, and I'm out on a trip today, so uh, we have this plugged in, but normally when we put the plane away for the night, we unplug this in order to minimize the chance of oxygen leaking out of the bottle. There's an inline indicator here that is orange or red when the uh, oxygen mask is unplugged. So it's spring-loaded to the orange position, and then this indicator turns green as soon as oxygen pressure is in the line. So once the uh, line is hooked up, we need to look at this inline indicator and make sure that it's turned green. We also come up here to the oxygen mask, and we actually test the flow of oxygen by going from the 100% selector, twist it over to Emer. Make sure that we hear the oxygen flowing and uh, then twist it back to the 100% setting. And that's what we have as the default when we're flying. Moving forward from the oxygen mask on the co-pilot side, we want to make sure that the uh, microphone for the oxygen mask is plugged into the, it, to the um, connection here to make sure that the microphone is able to be used if we needed to go to our oxygen mask, we have that microphone so that we can communicate with ATC is still. And then uh, the switch, there's a selector switch here that selects between our conventional regular headset and the oxygen mask microphone. So uh, that switch should be placed in the forward position for your regular headset because that's what we're using 99% of the time. And then if we had an emergency where we needed to use the oxygen mask, we would take that switch and flip it rearward uh, to use the built-in microphone to the oxygen mask. Sliding forward from the oxygen mask and the headset, we have the circuit breaker panel on the co-pilot side, and we want to make sure that all of the circuit breakers are in, meaning that they have not been popped. And if for some reason you find a popped circuit breaker, uh, definitely need to figure out what's going on with that. If, if there's actually a maintenance rate up on the airplane or if anybody knew about it uh, or basically just uh, don't don't just reset the breaker and move on um, if a breaker is popped investigate to figure out what caused it to pop and if that's a known issue and and what is being done about that now moving forward of the circuit breaker panel we have the oxygen tank uh, quantity or the oxygen tank pressure I guess I should say uh, that gauge here on the co-pilot side should show somewhere in the green arc there between about uh, 1600 and uh, 1800 PSI is what the O2 bottle should read. Now the thing to remember with the oxygen bottle is that it, the pressure will vary with temperature. So depending on what the temperature was when they filled the bottle and what the temperature is currently, you're going to see some fluctuations in pressure there. Um, on a really cold winter day, if it's below freezing out, uh, it's very possible that you might see that the uh, O2 pressure has dropped below the green arc and then uh, you fly down to Florida where it's 90 degrees and uh, it sits on the ramp for a few hours and that could easily bring it back up into the ground. On to switches for the uh, um, various systems here. We've got the air conditioning control panel. In this airplane it's actually labeled in op. We're, we're um, had some issues with it that are getting worked on so they've MEL'd that and um, that's in op right now in this particular plane but basically you want to make sure that the master switch on the far left side of the air conditioning panel is in the off position so this is where uh, it goes back to what I said earlier where every switch should be either off auto or normal and then um, moving over here to the gyros uh, make sure that those are down in the auto position I can read the Labels here on the bottom side, uh, the vertical gyro should be normal, defog fan off, overhead fan in the middle position is off. 
the windshield bleed air valve should be off normally. The only time we open those up is if we're purging the system or um, actually operating in icing conditions. And then moving up to the uh, pressurization and, and um, environmental controls here, we want to make sure that the temperature selector is somewhere in the automatic range, somewhere in the middle usually works good unless you know it's going to be really hot or really cold for the day. We want that in the automatic area. Um, and the pressurization source should be selected to normal. And coming rearward on the pedestal here, we should see that the flap selector matches the indicator and the pitch trim wheel um, should have the pitch trim set somewhere in the takeoff position in that range. The uh, throttle should be in the cutoff position all the way aft, as, as far back and as far down as they can go. And then when we continue looking back here, we get the aileron and rudder trim, and uh, that will be somewhere relatively close to the middle position there. Every airplane is just a little bit different, so I generally trust that the previous pilot had it set okay, unless I see something drastically different there. Moving back up to the top of the pedal still here now, we're going to look at the uh, ground idle switch. That should be down in the normal position. And right after I keep uh, harping about how everything should be off auto or normal, I come to the anti-skid switch. And this is, I guess, the one exception to that rule. The anti-skid switch should always be in the on position. Uh, there's really never a time, either under normal or abnormal situations that I'm aware of, that we turn the anti-skid off. Um, it's a... Uh, Kind of a long story about that that I could probably go on and on about, but um, in any case, leave the anti-skid switch on. That should always be on. Um, coming over to the landing lights and the taxi recce lights, the middle position of that three-way switch is off, and uh, we we leave it off. Uh, the beacon switch, again, this is kind of a, an exception, or uh, you can go either way with this. A lot of times we leave it on to remind us if the master is on. Now looking at this passenger safety switch, I want to talk about this for a minute. The passenger safety switch controls the seatbelt sign as well as the passenger safety light. So it's a three-way switch. Having it in the middle is off. That's what we should see at the start of a flight. Um, and when we move it down into the lower position for seatbelts, that will sound a chime and it will also turn the seatbelt sign on. Um, and if we were to go all the way up into the up position, or for passenger safety, that will turn the seatbelt sign on, but the, it will also turn the passenger safety lights on. And those passenger safety lights are the two lights that illuminate the entryway and the exit door. I'll show you those in a second. And um, we need to make sure that those are working in case we needed to uh, evacuate the aircraft quickly. As part of the pre-flight check, we're going to turn that switch up into the passenger safety position and then turn around and look out the back of the airplane and we see that the exit signs and those two lights shining on the doorways are illuminated and that allows us to evacuate the airplane quickly in the dark. If right next to the passenger safety switch we have the standby gyro switch. And if you can see at the bottom of that switch, there's a test position. And what we want to do to test that is it's a spring-loaded switch that we push down and we see a green light illuminate. And that green light illuminating means that the um, battery pack has sufficient power to power that standby gyro. And then we also want to flip it up into the up position and see the yellow light come on to indicate that we're running off that battery pack. And we'll hear the standby gyro start to spin up. Hopefully my camera will pick that up. That's uh, the gyro spinning up. And that indicates that everything is functioning the way it should. Everything is connected. And we can turn that back off. Continuing down the line here, we've got the um, control panel lights and the down position on this switch is off. We want to make sure that that's off. If we had that on and we were flying in the daytime, it would dim down all of our enunciators and we wouldn't be able to see the enunciators well or, or see them at all. So 
that needs to be off for daytime flights, or I suppose if you're going out flying at night, it'd be okay to turn it on. Moving further to the left, over on the pilot side here, we've got a, a whole slew of exterior lights and uh, gyro switches. And uh, this goes back to just the off, auto, or normal. So the down for the lights is all off. And uh, we've got a couple of gyro switches that are in auto or normal. And then above that, we have the ice protection switches. So the pitot heat should be off. The windshield bleeder is off. Alcohol uh, switch is off. The engine anti-ice switches are a three position switch and the middle is off. And uh, the surface auto switch or manual that uh, is a spring loaded switch in the middle is off. Moving a row up, we've got the ignition switches in the normal position. The fuel boost pump switches are in the normal position. So those will run during uh, engine start, cross feed, and anytime there's low fuel pressure sensed when they're in the normal position on a Citation Ultra. And uh, above that, we've got the um, main battery switch and the avionics switches. Those are either off. Well, I guess the, the, they're just uh, either off or on, so those are off. And then um, the generator switches, uh, if you're doing a battery start, which is what we typically do, we'll leave those switches up in the generator position. Or if you're doing a GPU start, you would, you would put those into the off position at that point. Moving aft away from that panel, we've got the pilot side circuit breaker panel, making sure that all of those circuit breakers are in. They, they don't need to be reset. They have not popped. And then it's a lot of the same information from the co-pilot side here where we have the um, microphone oxygen mask switch pushed forward so that we're using the conventional headset connection for the microphone, but we, we still have the emergency microphone plugged in. The oxygen is currently plugged in because we're on a trip. Of course, this would be unplugged if you were setting up the, the uh, um, aircraft for the first flight of the day. And then the one switch that's different back here compared to the co-pilot side is the oxygen control valve. So this is on a Citation Ultra that I'm giving the example, but this is very similar for a, um, a two or a five. They, they have a very similar systems, just slightly different display. And we would normally have the plane overnight in the crew only mode, again, to minimize oxygen leaking or that possibility. But we would want to flip that switch to normal because, um, if, it, if it's left in crew only, and we had a problem with the pressurization system, the oxygen mass would not drop to the passenger cabin if it's in crew only. It needs. And of course, last but not least, we take a look at this inline valve once the hose is plugged in and uh, see that we have the green indicator to indicate oxygen pressure in the line. And we would come up here and uh, actually twist the selector on the mask to the emer position make sure that we hear oxygen flowing, and then back to the 100% position for flight. That concludes the flow around the cockpit, setting up all the switches and what everything should look like for the first flight, or really at the, um, the start of any flight for that matter. And uh, after conducting that check and that uh, setup, we would move back here to the uh, pilot side control panel for switches, and we would check the Emer bus. I have a separate video here that goes in detail about checking the Emer bus items. So we can see that the Emer bus is functioning correctly. And then we would turn the main battery master on just like that. And we do a rotary test. Again, I have a separate uh, video showing details of the rotary test. And uh, you can go through that to see what the rotary test involves. And uh, that would pretty much be it for setting up the cockpit on a Citation Ultra here, but the, the same principle applies for the entire 500 series Citation line.